Welcome to CoreLogic's housing market update for November 2023. CoreLogic's National Home Value Index rose a further 0.9% in October, accelerating from a 0.7% rise in September. Since finding a trough in January, the National Home Value Index has increased by 7.6%, leaving the index only half a percent below its historic high recorded in April of last year. At this rate of growth, we're likely to see the National Home Value Index reach a new record high midway through November, recovering from the 7.5% drop in values recorded through the downturn between May of 2022 and January of 2023. Although housing values are consistently rising across most capital cities, there has been a slowdown in the quarterly pace of growth. Capital city home values rose 2.6% over the three months to October, down from the 3.7% rise seen over the three months to June, likely driven by a combination of higher advertised stock levels and stretched affordability. As the flow of new listings coming into the market accelerates, it's unlikely buyer demand will be able to keep pace amid high interest rates and low sentiment. Dwelling values rose across each of the capital cities, except Darwin, through the month, with Perth, Brisbane and Adelaide the top performing markets. Meanwhile, Sydney, Perth and Brisbane have all seen dwelling values rise by more than 10% over the first 10 months of the year. Brisbane housing values posted a nominal recovery in October, erasing the previous 8.9% drop in values to reach a new record high. Perth and Adelaide are also at new record highs after recovering from the shallower downturns earlier this year. Across the other capitals, Sydney values remain 2.2% below their January 2022 peak and Melbourne values are 3.7% below their March 2022 peak. Hobart housing values are down the most from their recent highs, remaining 11.6% below peak levels. Regional markets continue to lag their capital city counterparts, with the combined regional index up 0.7% in October compared with a 0.9% rise across the combined capitals. This trend of higher growth in the capital cities was evident across every state. Despite the slower pace of growth, every rest of state region did record a rise in housing values over the month, except regional Tasmania, where housing values were flat. Similar to the trend in the capitals, regional Queensland, Western Australia and South Australia are all showing stronger conditions, with each of these broad regions at record highs in October. The trend in advertised stock levels remains a critical feature of the housing market. After 10 months of below average vendor activity, the flow of new capital city listings has ramped up through winter and spring to be almost 12% higher than a year ago. Although total listings remain lower than this time last year and below the previous five-year average, it's clear that inventory levels are rising. Capital city stock on the market is up 5.1% since the start of spring in a clear indication that buyer demand isn't keeping pace with the flow of new listings. However, the balance of advertised supply remains diverse around the country. At one end of the spectrum is Perth, where advertised stock levels have fallen through spring to be 2.1% below levels recorded at the end of winter. Additionally, listing numbers have hardly budged in Brisbane and Adelaide. At the other end of the spectrum is the ACT, where total listings have jumped 21.3% through spring to date. Listings are also up 10.7% across Melbourne and 9.3% higher across Sydney, while Hobart listings have been well above average for more than a year. While vendor activity has picked up, home sales are tracking only slightly above the five-year average across the capitals and are losing some momentum. Regional sales are holding reasonably steady, but at slightly below average levels. With vendor activity gathering some momentum while buyer activity slows, it's likely selling conditions will continue to rebalance back towards buyers, especially in those cities where advertised supply levels are high. In markets where demand and advertised supply levels are more evenly balanced, it's logical to expect price growth to slow down. In other markets, such as Perth, where listings are almost 45% below the five-year average, while sales activity is almost 25% above average, prices are rising at the fastest pace since March of 2021. The outlook for housing market growth isn't as positive as it was a few months ago, with advertised stock levels on the rise, while buyer demand looks increasingly shaky amid low sentiment, stretched affordability, and the potential for another rate hike. For those looking to buy, this is good news. Low levels of available supply have been a central feature of the housing upswing to date. However, advertised supply levels are now rising. As the flow of new listings outpaces the number of active buyers, inventory is trending higher in some markets, including the largest cities. 
More stock means more choice, less urgency in decision making, and a greater ability to negotiate for buyers. A subtle rebalancing in selling conditions can be seen in auction clearance rates, which have faded from the low 70% range in May to the low 60% mark at the end of October. While advertised supply is likely to rise further through spring and into early summer, the prospects for buyer demand aren't as positive. For the past year, consumer sentiment has been holding at similar levels to the early stages of the pandemic and the worst of the financial crisis. With consumer sentiment and housing activity showing a close relationship historically, a further drop in consumer spirits could be accompanied by a reduction in buyer activity. There is a good chance consumer sentiment will fall even lower due to the bounce back in inflation and the potential for higher interest rates and worsening global tensions. While downside factors have become more prominent over recent months, other factors may support demand and values. Labor markets have loosened a little, but with unemployment expected to remain well below the long-run average, it's unlikely mortgage defaults or distressed home sales will rise materially. Additionally, a burgeoning housing undersupply could keep some upwards pressure on housing prices, at least over the medium term. With rental markets the tightest on record, there may also be some spillover from rental demand into purchasing demand. Financial hurdles including saving for a deposit, funding transactional costs and qualifying for a mortgage could be the biggest challenge for renters looking to buy. The wash-up is that we're likely to see a further reduction in the rate of growth in housing values over the months ahead, alongside increased diversity in capital growth performance. The pace of gains has clearly tapered from earlier in the year across the largest capitals, driven by higher advertised stock levels and stretched housing affordability. Other markets, such as Perth, Brisbane and Adelaide, may be less impacted amid ongoing advertised supply shortages and lower housing affordability hurdles. Additionally, Perth and Brisbane have the benefit of positive interstate migration that likely supports purchasing demand more directly than overseas migration. There's plenty to keep an eye on as we move towards summer. You can stay in touch with all our housing market research and updates at the news pages of the corelogic.com.au website or via LinkedIn, Instagram and Facebook.